Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing day. This is gonna be just a short macro compilation. I've been mucking around at the local nature reserve for about an hour, an hour and a half, and I've managed to stumble upon a few really interesting creatures, and I can't wait to share those images with you. I've been shooting everything with my Canon R7, the Laowa 90mm 2X ultra macro lens. For lighting, I use the 600DX2 RT Speedlight from Canon, and I have got the usual reflector diffuser kit attached as well. I will leave links to everything in the description box, so feel free to check those out. Anyway, let's have a look at those images now. All right, let's start with some jumping spiders. They are definitely my perennial favorites. This first specimen was a female garden jumping spider that I spotted on a small sapling, and I wish I had been able to capture a more deep stack portrait, but she was quite skittish and kept hiding from me, so I only managed to grab this first portrait, which contains two individual frames, while this subsequent shot was blended together from three layers and contains slightly more detail. I really love the coloration of this species, the rich vibrant orange hues and the amazing number of CT, the tiny hair-like structures covering the cephalothorax and virtually the entire body of this tiny fella. The second subject was a male garden jumping spider as well, which I found at another spot. He was extremely lively and energetic and didn't stop moving, kept jumping from one leaf onto another and was quite happy with this following image where he was about to leap off. Nailing the focus on the eyes wasn't an easy task at this magnification ratio and even though it's not perfect, I quite like the pose. The next couple of shots are of another garden jumper. This male might have been a 6 mile jumping spider just based on the patterns of his abdomen but not 100% sure. I took this first image from a high angle and had to lower the flesh output a little as the silver color of its cephalothorax was highly reflective and didn't want to blow the highlights out. I'm really happy with the second portrait because of the eye contact. Also look at those massive fangs, those chelicerae look pretty impressive and if I was a tiny cobweb spider I would definitely try to avoid those. Our last series of jumping spiders is of a female peacock spider that was rather large. If you look at the size of her abdomen its distension indicates that she was most likely carrying eggs. She might have been pretty close to laying an egg sac as well. I spent about 10 to 15 minutes trying to capture her as she was moving stealthily amongst the lush foliage and especially like this very last side portrait of her with her abdomen partially covered by vegetation. Our next subject is a round shouldered or beaver but I haven't been able to identify the exact species yet. While this first portrait only contains two layers, I was lucky to take 12 individual images from a different angle for a more detailed stack shot. I had to hold the vegetation in my hand to minimize movement of the substrate and it definitely paid off. I really love all the intricate details we got in this high magnification photo of this gorgeous specimen. The next four shots I'm about to show you are of two different species of sting bugs, also known as shield bugs, that belong to the genus Oncochorus. It's pretty obvious why they are called shield bugs from this high angle shot. Sting bugs have a special ability to emit an odor through holes in their abdomen as a defensive mechanism against potential predators such as birds and lizards. In this last frontal low angle shot you can see the proboscis which is an elongated flexible tubular mouth part that a lot of insects have. Sting bugs use their proboscis to pierce the host plant to feed on plant sap. Our next subject is a quirky looking plant hopper that belongs to the genus Platybrachis. I believe this was a nymph and those large appendages were actually longer than the body itself. If you know anything about their function please let me know in the comments below. Our second last subject is a tiny cobweb spider that was feeding on a much larger prey, what was most likely a lysinid butterfly, a typical blue. This first image was taken at the maximum magnification and you can even see individual scales of its wings that were highly iridescent. I lowered the magnification to about 1 to 1 for the second portrait so you can see the size difference between prey and predator a little better. Here's our last subject that I was really stoked to capture. This species is a gorgeous speckled orb beaver with amazing coloration. I only had to stack 5 images for this final shot as it was very cooperative, wasn't moving on this blade of grass at all. I really love the different shades of green and the amazing abdominal patterns on this little beauty.
Thank you so much for watching this short macro compilation. If you got any questions or feedback, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. You might also want to have a look at these videos next. Thanks again and catch you all very soon in the next one. Thank you.